glad in it. I don't know how many of y'all be happy to be in the house of the Lord one more time, but if you are, give God a great big old hand clap of praise. Hallelujah. He's worthy to be praised. He's worthy of all the glory. He's worthy of all the honor in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We're going to go ahead and get started in our service. I'm going to ask our devotional team to come up and help me as we open up with some songs to the Lord.
Sister Dawn, if she can come up and open us up in our prayer.
I know that I can't do it without her. Amen. Amen. And I had a song that I just, just a little bit that I wanted to sing because it kind of gets me through the day, if I can, if y'all don't mind. Okay. Go ahead. You know I don't mind. <laughs> I don't Come on now. You sing the whole thing. You want that? Uh, no. <laughs> you know, this is. Yeah. Check, check. Check, song that means a lot to me um, because I know that I can't do it without him and I have to depend on the Lord. Amen. Anything that I do, I have to depend on the Lord. Growing up as a child, can y'all clap like me and beat me? In my mother's care, my mother told me. Jesus, he was always there. Yes. Now I'm a grown man living in my own, yeah. I can truly say Jesus he ain't never, he ain't never let me alone. Home, home. Hey, 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 hey. Is there anybody in this place that can raise their hand and say, Oh, 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 Jesus, he was always down. Now I'm a grown man. Living, 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 living on my own, yeah. I can truly say, Jesus ain't never, he ain't never let me alone. Hey, 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 hey. No. I'm depending on you. Is there anybody in this place that can raise their hand and just go, no, oh, 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 I'm depending on you. Yes. I'm depending when their money gets short, yes, when my friends get few, yes. and I don't know what to do. And I found somebody who I can lean on. And I found somebody who I can lean on. Y'all wanna know who I'm leaning on. Y'all wanna know who I'm leaning on. His name is Jesus, 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 Jesus. I love you, Jesus. I want you, Jesus. I need you, Jesus. Gotta have you, Jesus. I love you, Jesus. I need you, Jesus. I want you, Jesus. Gotta have, gotta have, gotta have, gotta have, gotta have, gotta have. Hallelujah. Gotta have Jesus. I ain't gonna come and sing after that. Praise God for that Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. You've got to have them. Got to have them. I think I heard. I think I heard Brother Mike back there sing a little tune with him. Brother Mike got a little voice on him. Let me talk about it now. You know I had you up here singing. I heard that tune. I heard that tune. That was all right. I just wish you knew the song. You could have been up here with him. Because I was harmonizing for a minute. God is good. But God is truly so good. Is there another that has a testimony in the house? Go ahead, Sister James. 
Yes, you do. Share. Putting this up below. My turn, won't you? I've been wanting to share this testimony for a little bit, but I'll, I'll, I'll wait until my cue. Nobody asked for sharing the testimony. Um, I want to say about how long ago was it my dad went in the hospital? Less than a month. Probably about three weeks ago? Yeah. Okay, so my, my father had a major heart attack. Yeah, it's all right. Um, Take your time. I was going to get up here and not cry. <laughs> okay, so he had, he had a major heart attack. Now, I don't come from a family that went to church, but I know my father did. And I know he knows Jesus. But he doesn't live that life. But I know it's there because that's where it was painted to me and his mother. <sighs> so on the way to the hospital, I was praying. I was like, Lord, I know he knows who you are. Just remind him of who you are. So I get to the emergency room and, you know, they have him stable. He's talking and everything and they needed to go do a dye test to check where the blockage was in his heart. So, um, during the midst of me sitting there with him, I was on the phone with my brother. And I went to go give my father the phone to talk to my brother. In the midst of me handing him the phone, Bishop calls me. <laughs> and in my phone, he saved as Bishop. And if you look at Bishop, what is the first thing that you think of? You're going to think God. You're going to think church. You're going to think. And I'm like, thank you, God. <laughs> he did that. He did it on purpose to remind my dad where he come from. Um, that's what I truly believe in my heart. Because how, how does that just happen? So anyway, he went in to go through the dye test, and they found a blockage in, and he had to have two stents put in. Um. Of course, I called Bishop, and he prayed over, you know, he prayed, and, and of course, me and Andre said. <sighs> so anyway, in the midst of him getting the stents put in, he ended up aspirating, and they had to put the ventilator on him. And he was on a ventilator for two days. But God. But God. But God. But God. Uh -huh. um, he did well on the ventilators, and he got off the ventilators. And my father feels 10 times better than he did a year and a half ago, even before COVID. And I give all that glory to God because nobody can, nobody can do that. He, he was on a ventilator, and I know that it was God because he showed me that sign when I handed my father that phone, and Bishop called at the same time. So my father is doing great. Yesterday. My father means a lot to me because he raised me. I wasn't raised by my mother. My father raised me. So it, it, it's a, a special kind of relationship, you know. But uh, he's a big teddy bear, and I'm glad that it was not his time. But all praise be to God that yes. he's reminded him of where he came from, and he is still here. And Amen. That oxygen is flowing through his veins. That Hallelujah. What a won't he do it? Yes, he will. He's the doctor that created the doctor that created the doctor. So we thank God for his healing virtues upon Sister Jamie's dad. Is there another testimony in the house? Praise, Praise God. God. Praise God. I give an honor to God who's the head of my life, who is my life, to my pastor. Bless God bless, bless you. you. To my minister, God bless you. So, I'm, so I guess it was a few weeks ago we were on Zoom call. And Bishop said that right before you move back to Connecticut, that all hell is going to break loose. So I take I think it was that next weekend or so, that my neighbor shot at my little Shih Tzu. Didn't kill him, but shot at him. And that's never happened. My dog plays with their kids, and, you know, they play with my dog, and all of a sudden they shot at my dog. I didn't understand it. So I called the police, and the first thing the female police said was, down in Georgia, that is the law. They have the right. 
But don't you know God got a ram in the bus because the other officer said you have no right to shoot at that dog yeah, to call God. animal control. That's how it's done down here. Mm -hmm. So then if that wasn't enough. And and I get the glory, I give God the glory out of that because what is meant for evil, God will sure yes, turn out for good. Yes, he will. So now that I'm walking my dog on the leash, which I haven't been, which is against the law. <laughs> now I got to see what he's up to when he's out there. And thank God he crosses over highways and byways and God kept my dog. Mm. So I got to see that, hmm, what you meant for evil, God turned off my good. Because now I, I see what my dog's up to and he couldn't have been taken from me. Mm. That's not enough. My cousin says, D, we got a problem. He said, come outside, something happened to your car. I said, you know what, Bishop warned me, so hey, let's, let's go see what it's all about. I didn't even get discouraged, I said, whatever. So my basketball hoop, the wind blew it, and it smacked the back of my window. Mm -hmm. And I was like, oh boy. I said, crack the window, whatever. No, hey, whatever. So when we got up, down to the car, it had, it had cracked the cake of ice that was on top of the window. Praise God. <laughs> wow. So I did not see the damage of my window. So I said, oh, thank you, Jesus. So I just say all that to say that what is meant for evil, God will turn around for good. No weapon formed against you. I mean, they will form, but they shall not fight. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I just want to thank yeah. God. He gave us some trouble mercies, and I just want to thank God that the accident that was up ahead was not us. Mm. Could have been, but it was not. So I just give all praise and glory on today. Amen. We thank God for that testimony, and we do thank God that God brought my sister and I safely back from Georgia. Um, I landed Friday night, midnight. She picked me up from the airport. We turned around and drove. We started driving straight back to Connecticut, but we had to pull over about 6.30 in the morning. Uh, we both were very sleepy. We both had one all day Friday, and then um, we got a hotel for a couple of hours, got back on the road, and we got in some time this morning. So we just truly thank God for even being able to be here. You know, like she said, that accident that was up ahead was not for us. So we truly thank God for that. And um, I love what you said. No weapon being formed against you shall prosper. And that God is really a keeper of his word. And you have so many things that try to come up against you. So much adversity and so many obstacles. The enemy is always throwing darts and throwing darts and throwing darts. But the one thing about God is he's faithful and he's just. And he is a key. He said, I honor my word above my very name. So we just thank God for being true to who he is. And we never have to worry when we're truly in his care. So we thank God for those testimonies that have gone forth. Is there another in the house with a testimony? Is there another? Amen. Amen. God is good. Amen. I was going to try to be quiet. Um, <laughs> but I can't be quiet on a big God. You know what I'm saying? God is good and I honor him. I give him all glory and praise. Um, so uh, a few weeks back, well, pretty much every time I talk to Bishop Gill, he speaks into my life. But the last few times he's been speaking about financial increase. And um, all of you may not know, but I used to work for CVH here in Middletown for the CEO for a few years. And um, I decided to take another opportunity and um with that opportunity um it was it was less responsibility better benefits better pay better hours so i couldn't really let that go right okay so i started that job january 31st Work from home five days a week. I gotta go and see nobody in the office, praise the Lord. Jesus. All right. Um, January 31st, I started. I was there about three weeks, not even a month, right? And the manager of human resources reached out to me. She's like, Oh, I just wanna check in, see how you're doing, how things are going, you got everything you need. I was like, Everything's great, everybody's great, blah, 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 blah. She was like, Okay. So what I was wondering is if you'd be interested in applying for a higher level position, which would be, so I'm, I'm currently the executive assistant to, a, to um, a specific team of this company. 
she was asking me if I would be interested in applying for the executive assistant to the CEO. Mind you, that's what I was doing at CEH, right? So um, I was like, okay, well, let, let me see. Let me read the qualifications and such, right? And uh, she's like, okay, go ahead and let me know your thoughts and blah, blah, blah. I said, okay. So I went and read the qualifications, y'all. Okay. So it says that this position, now the responsibilities is everything I've done. So I know I got that, no problem, right? But it said, the qualification said, degree is required. And then it said, at least 10 years of executive level experience. I ain't got no degree, y'all. And I got five years of experience. But they called me and asked me if I wanted, if I would like to apply for the So uh, I said, okay, I'm going to apply for it. I applied for it. They're like, we're going to meet next week, interview you with the CEO, blah, blah, blah. I was like, okay. But I don't like interviews. Like, I know I could work, but I don't like interviews. Because you can say the wrong word, and then they'd be like, we don't want her, you know. So I was a little nervous or what have you, but interview day came. They asked me, and I want to interview question. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I was all nervous. I'm like, She's just going to ask me questions. They're just telling me about the position. Now, this is CEO. She's just telling me about the position and what you'll be doing. And um, at the end of the conversation, she said, so just let me know if you want the position. I was like, all right. But, uh, okay. So she got off the phone. HR lady still on the phone. And she, I'm like, well, now we got to talk some money. No. <laughs> you know, I mean. I'm valuable, I, I think, you know. Right. So, you know, she was like, I'll get back to you by Monday with what the salary would be, blah, blah, blah. I said, great, no problem. So during that little conversation, um, when the CEO was talking to me, God had put a number in my head already, and I left it at that. So when she reached out to me on Monday, she sent me what they would like to offer me. And she said that was the highest that they could do because – They can only do 10% increase of your current salary for a promotion. Mm -hmm. So they offered me $6,900 more a year. I was like, okay, let's do it. Because it's a good company, good benefits, you get raises every year. So I know God is doing something. So I was going to accept that. I said, all right, draft up the offer letter and we'll get going. (laughs) Offer letter didn't come the next day. She emailed me the following, the, the second day after that. Oh, wait, before that, I was like, well, I did think that it should be this amount more per hour in my mind. Because remember, I told you I had that set amount that popped in my head. I was like, but we'll roll with what you said. And I apologize for asking all these questions. She's like, don't, have, don't apologize because you're your biggest advocate. I was like, mm, that makes sense, right? So I left it alone. Wednesday, I think it was Wednesday, I don't know. A couple days later. Yeah, Wednesday morning. <laughs> we on vacation in Tennessee. And um, I got an email from her. And I'm thinking it's the offer letter. We can get this going. She was like, good morning, little boy. We're waiting uh, for the CEO to sign off on your offer letter so we can get it out to you. And we've actually changed your offer, your salary, to 11000 more a year. Oh. Listen, I ran through that hotel room. I ran through that hotel room screaming, crying. But I was like, did I read that right? So let me go back to the phone real quick and see what it said. And then it, I said, okay. And I started running and screaming and crying, leaning over the bed, just thanking the Lord. Mike was like, what's going on? Wow. Listen, God is good. When you think you're not qualified, he's our qualifier. Woo! And listen, the position that I'll start next Monday, even though they already got me working in it, officially start next Monday is $15,000 more a year that I was making at CBH for the same role that I'm doing. Somebody in here. 
Jesus. Thank you, God. We thank God that he is our qualifier. Because men will look at you and judge you. They got so much to say about you. They talk behind your back. They smile in your face. But God doesn't allow men to qualify you. God qualifies you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He's the only judge. He's the only righteous judge.
God said, I am not like man. I don't lie. I don't have to repent. I am God. I created the world. He said, just like I told Job, I, where were you when I put the suns? The sun in the sky. Where were you when I put the stars in the sky? Where were you when I made the moon? He said, I'm that God. And I have each and every one of your backs. There's no battle that you can't face that God's not going to walk you through. He said, Jamie, keep your hands locked in my hands. Locked in my hands. I'm going to take you through everything that you have to go through in life. And I'm going to make it so there are people around you that are not saved. And they're going to see what God is doing in your life. And they're going to come to you. And they're going to begin to inquire about the God that you serve. God said, I'm still the same God that's in the miracle working business. Yes, yes, he is. Yes, he is. All you have to do is come before me, Brother Earn. Yes. Yes. Come before me. Lay it at my feet. Yes. I know every struggle that you struggle with, Kayla. Every struggle, every struggle that's inside of your mind, yes. I know what you go through. God said, I got you. Jesus. I need you to trust me, Kyra. Yes. Trust me more and more and more. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. God wants his people free. Not in bondage. I heard Pastor Tony Evans preach this morning. And I didn't preach the, 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 the sermon on Lazarus and coming up the grave in a way I never heard before. He said, although Jesus said Lazarus come forth and Lazarus was able to get out the grave and move, he was still bound. Minister Andre said, he was still wrapped up. Even though he was free, he didn't have liberty. God said, I want you all to have liberty. I want you all to be free of me. The devil is a liar. He is trying to deceive each and every one of you with something. Something each and every one of you are struggling with on the inside of yourself. God said, I am freeing you from that. When I see you, I don't want you to act like you're still bound. Yes. I said I gave you new garments. I took your old filthy yes. garments and I gave you new garments. Yes. Yes. Help us. Yes. Yes. Mm. God is here to set you all free today. Thank you, Jesus. Each and every one. Thank you, Jesus. He is here to set you all free Jesus. from the bondage Satan is trying yes. so hard. He's trying to get a hold of you so hard. Let me tell you, I had a dream Wednesday night. Pray, I told him it's not Teresa. I had a dream. I was, I don't even know where I was at, but there were snakes all around me. They were from this tiny and this slim. To the, the biggest one had a head like this. And they were, I could hear people just screaming. All around me were being bit, and I was standing there just watching, watching, and I was afraid, and I was watching. And I, and I could see that big one with the big head just kept looking at me like he was trying to get to me. He kept advancing, but there was people in the way, and he kept eating the people as he was going, but he never got to me. The same God that protects me yes. in the earth realm is the same God hey, that protects me hey, in the spiritual realm. Hey, God said you're going to have some enemies. They're going to come up against Jesus. you. They're going to try to take your mind. Jesus. They're going to try to convince you of things that are not true. Yes. God said that is not so. That is not who I created you to be. I can't even stop seeing how special you are to God right now. He just keeps showing me how special you are to him. You are special. Don't you ever, and I know your mother doesn't tell you different. I'm just telling you, there's people on the street that would like to put stuff into you. Don't you ever let nobody tell you that you're not special. You are a special and a religion when it comes to God. You are set apart for a reason. You know why you ain't going to fit in a lot of situations? <laughs> Baby girl, God don't want you to fit. He put you apart. He set you aside for a reason. So when you're having those frustrating moments and you don't understand, I used to think... I didn't fit in with my own family, with my own mother. Didn't understand the plan that God had for me. It was not designed for me to fit. It was designed for me to learn, to lean, and depend on Jesus. That's what I want you to lean and depend on me. You got an issue with some church folks. You got an issue with church. God said, it was never designed to be that way. I got you, Melanie. And I want to show you the proper way. Because you were hurt by some church stuff, 
God's going to use you to speak into use. Because even though the enemy wants to destroy you with that, God said, I'm, I'm turning that for your good. It's already turned in the spiritual realm. This is a matter of time before it lines up in the natural. He got you. 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 God said, I want you. Hallelujah! I want you all. I want you all. I want you all to begin a deeper relationship with me. I want you all to begin a deeper relationship with me. I want you all to begin a deeper relationship with me. He said, you have not seen the things that I want to do in this house. You can't even begin to know the things I want to do in each and every one of you individually. But God said, I don't want you to be a compromising church like the one of the churches at Asia Minor. He said, but I desire that you would knock after me and after my ways. God said, you were set apart for a reason and a season. He said, the season is now. He said, if you don't want to be a part of what I'm doing, you know, Bishop Paul Morton sang the song, said, Lord, whatever you're doing, don't do it without me. God said, I need that to be your attitude and your mindset. He said, because if you don't want to be a part of what I'm doing, he said, guess what? I will still let you grow up with the wheat, Brother Earn. He said, I'll let them come up together, the wheat and the tear. See, because God knows what's on the inside of your heart. You can fool yourself, you can fool man, but you can never fool God. He said, I'll let you grow up with the tear. I will let you grow up with the wheat. And when I come back, I'm going to do the separate. God said, I want you in this for real. I don't care if you fall down, Sister Dawn, a thousand times. I don't care how many times the enemy come at you, Sister Brianna. God said, I want you in this for real. Lives literally are dependent. There are people around each and every one of you that are watching you. They are watching you simply because you say you belong to God. Yes, yes. And the enemy has his little imps. See, because the enemy ain't like God. He, he, he cannot be omnipresent. He can't be everywhere at the same time like God can. Right. So he got to send out his little army of imps. And they all around infiltrating. Look at all the signs that are in the world today. We may very well be at the beginning of World War III. Uh, and God said, when you start seeing these signs happen, Jesus told his disciples, he said, don't become afraid, for these are just the beginning of the sorrows, the beginning of our pain. That's why God said, it's so important that you do this thing for real. The attitude in your heart needs to be for real. What's in your heart is what will manifest in your life. If you play in church, God knows. And if you are the church, God knows that too. Let us bow. God, you are from everlasting to everlasting. And we thank you, God, that you are our king, God. We know back in the day the, 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 the Israelites decided they wanted to have a, a visual king that they could see God. And, and that was a mistake right there. But God, we at the Great of Christian Church accept you as our king, God, in the name of Jesus. And we thank you for allowing us to be your children, God. We thank you for allowing us to be your ambassadors, God. We thank you for allowing us to be your frontline workers, God. We just say thank you, God. God, we ask right now as we embark on this tedious journey on the earth, oh God, that you will continue to strengthen us, oh God, and endow us with your spirit, God, because we know that we cannot do anything without your spirit, God. And so, God, we just say thank you in the name of Jesus, God. God, we ask of those areas in our life, oh God, that don't line up with you from the pulpit to the door, God, including and even me, God. We ask, oh God, that you would help us, oh God. Help us in those ways that displease you.
please you, God. Help us in those things that we speak out of our mouth that are displeasing to your ears, God. Help us every time we misrepresent you, God, in the name of Jesus, God. God, we ask, oh God, in the name of Jesus, that you would give us a special anointing. In the name of Jesus, that every time, oh God, we open up our mouths, God. They don't even see us, God, but they only hear you, God. In the name of Jesus, God. God, we ask that you cover our faults and our flaws and our mishaps and our mistakes. Cover them, God, with your blood. That man is not looking at us for that, God, but they are seeing, oh God, the you that lives on the inside of us, oh God. Help us, Holy Ghost. Jesus said when you left to go to the Father, you will send one that will be the comforter that will live on the inside of us, oh God. We thank you right now for the Holy Ghost living on the inside of us. Rise up in us, Holy Ghost. Rise up, oh God, in the name of Jesus. Have your way, oh God. Say we rebuke you and all your tactics right now. All your schemes right now in the name of Jesus. Until that shall not work. And we put you up on our feet right now in the name of Jesus, God. God, we lift you on high. We're praying for our nation and our leaders, God, in the name of Jesus. We know that it's all a part of your perfect plan, God, but your plan is perfect. And we trust you, Lord. God, we thank you, oh God, for allowing us, oh God, to be watchmen, oh God. That we continue to watch and pray for the things in this world, oh God, that don't line up with you, God. God, I ask for each and every baby that's standing around this altar, God. And I don't necessarily mean age, God. But you already know. I praise you, oh God. God, that you would grow them and mature them and root them down in you, God. God, for those of us who are seasoned, God, let us be the example for those who are coming after us, God, in the name of Jesus, God. So, God, we just thank you that you love us so much. You don't look at us, oh, God, for the sick condition we can be in sometimes, God. But you look at the masterpiece that you created, God. So I personally say thank you for that, God. Because I was a mess in my own mind, God. But I thank you for deliverance, God. I thank you for your love. I thank you for your son who went out on Calvary's cross. And he died for each and every one, God. He didn't just die for a black race. He didn't just die for a white race. He didn't just die for an Asian race, or Spanish race, a Haitian race. But God, you said he died one for one and all. And God, if that's not good news, I don't know what it is. So God, we thank you, oh God, that you said, you know, through this life, you're going to have trials and tribulations. But you encouraged us and told us to be of good cheer because you have overcome the world. So as we see all these calamities happening, God, as we see all these tragedies taking place, God, God, we can keep our eyes stayed on you, the author and the finisher of our faith, God, in the name of Jesus. On Christ the solid rock we stand, and all other ground is sinking. See, God, we're leaning and depending on you, God, to see us through, God. We thank you for the testimonies of the people that have gone forth, God, to allow folk to know, God, that you are the same God that blessed them. You are the same God that can bless others, God. Look upon those who are in their home right now, God, those who are watching live online, God, in the name of Jesus. Somebody right now is battling within themselves, God. God, that's just where Satan desires them to be. Wishy-washy, unstable, unsure, not knowing God. But God, you said you came that we might have life and that we might have it more abundantly, God. Sometimes we like to tack material things on the abundant part. But God, some that, sometimes that abundantly can be in our health. Sometimes that abundantly can be in the struggle in our mind, God. So I ask that you would go, oh God, to those homes and free those minds, oh God, right now in the name of Jesus. God, loose them so they are no longer bound to the tactics of the enemy, God, in the name of Jesus, God. God, how we thank you and we magnify you and we glorify you now. And God, now as we look to you to hear a word from on high, God, because God, we know that you don't fail us, God. You said man will fail us all the time, but you never will. So, God, we're thanking you for the word that shall come forth. God, a healing word, a delivering word, an encouraging word, God. However you decide to bring the word, God, we know that the word was given, oh God, for correction, for reproof, for reproof, oh God, for encouragement, God. And we trust you. We trust you in your word, God. Let us not see the one that's bringing forth the word, but let us hear what you are saying through the one that's bringing forth the word. 
Because God, sometimes we can get in our own minds and we can judge that person who's bringing forth the word, not realizing that they are just as human as anybody else. So God, let us hear what the Spirit is saying. And we rebuke all distractions. We rebuke anything that is not of you in this service today, that you may have your way, Holy Spirit. God, we thank you. We praise you. We love you now, God. Go into the prisons, God. Go into the nursing home, God, in the name of Jesus, God. We thank you for looking upon those, oh God, that are in orphanages, oh God, in the name of Jesus. Those who are on hospice right now, in the name of Jesus, God. As you told Jeremiah, is there anything too hard for the Lord? And the answer is always no. So we thank you, oh God, for freedom and for liberty in this house on today. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Somebody give God a great big holiday. This time we're going to ask Brother Mike to come for a basket for our offering. Where are 
because you loved us. Hallelujah. You loved us despite of our mess. And we just thank you for that on today, Father God. And as I come forth, I ask that you just remove Andresa out of the way on today, Lord God. And just allow your spirit, huh? allow your spirit to come forth, God. And whatever you want to say, God, allow me to say it, Father God. And whoever you need it to touch, Lord, allow it to touch them, yes. Father God. Allow it to manifest in their hearts and in their minds, Father God, so that they will never be the same, Lord God. We just thank you in advance for what you're going to do, Lord God. Hallelujah. We glorify your holy and your righteous name. We give you all glory. We give you all praise. In the mighty name of Jesus, I do pray. Amen and amen. Yes, God. Hallelujah. So for today, my scripture will be Mark chapter 11, verse 24. Just one scripture for today. That's Mark chapter 11, verse 24. Amen. Amen. And it reads, <clears throat> therefore I tell you, whatever you ask for in prayer, believe that you have received it, and it will be yours. Amen. And that is the reading of God's word. Amen. And if I was to have a title for today, which I will have a title because that's what I do. Uh-huh, uh-huh. The title would be, Work Your Faith. All right, we're going to work some faith today, y'all. So this scripture is one of my favorite, I have many, but this is one of my favorite scriptures because it's something that I live by, right? So when I hear this, what's it telling you guys? What's it telling you? It's telling you what? And when I ask for something in prayer and I believe it, I'm going to receive it, yes. right? So I'm a believer. So I should be believing, right? So when I'm asking in prayer, I'm believing I got it, it's mine. Amen? And that's what I use on a daily basis. I'm going to give it to God and ask him in prayer. And because I know who he is, I believe I've got it, it's mine. According to his timing though, right? We get stuck right there. We get stuck right there. Oh, it ain't come when I wanted Jesus. That means it wasn't time for it to come. Right? I'm going to sit down somewhere. Listen. All right now. <laughs> so we have to, when we look at this scripture, you know, we should be encouraged because it's reminding us that God will never fall short on his word. He won't do it. The word won't come back void to us. It won't. It won't. It won't. So we should be encouraged in our hearts to know that God's got us. You know God's got you. You know God's got you, right? Yes. All right, all right. And just like with, you know, natural foods, we have to break them down. We eat them and make sure we get the proper nutrients from the food, get that substance, right? It's the same with our spiritual food, right? We need to get all the meat and the juices from the spiritual food. We got to let it marinate, and then it can resonate, right? And then it can rise up in our spirit. And help us grow. Did y'all know that? See? We get nutrients from the word. Thank you, Jesus. Yes, yes, yes. All right. So for this scripture, whatever you ask in prayer, whatever you ask in prayer. So we're not talking about a specific set of things. It says whatever. So it's not saying just ask for those material things. <laughs> I mean, they're good sometimes, but that's not what it's saying. It's not saying just ask for those monetary things. Okay. Right? It's not saying ask for that boo thing. It's not saying that, right? It's whatever you ask for. God does not restrict us. We restrict us, right? God does not restrict us. He gives us freedom. He gives us Free will to make decisions and to do some things. Amen? Amen? So let's say you're a young gentleman and you your your vision is to own a multi-million dollar company. But you're realizing that you're not you don't have the proper qualifications. 
such as proper education or even the financial stability that may be needed for this company well in the natural right we create limits on ourselves we create limits on ourselves in our mind that will cause us to believe we can't right to believe that we're not good enough to believe that we're not qualified but we have to be able to work our thing yes. and not dwell on what we cannot see right we have to remember who we say we believe in who we say we trust in and we have to walk forth therein right yes. we have to begin to take the limits off of not just what we're praying for, but off of God in general. Hey! Right? Take the limits off. Take them off. Jesus. And then begin to seek God for those impossible things. Yes. Yes. Those things that you're like, the only way that's going to happen is if God do it. That, that, that's the only way that's going to happen. <laughs> that's it. Right? We got to seek Him for those things. Those impossible things, right? Yes. And because God's not limited. He's the man of the impossible. Hey, hey, hey. He's not limited. Yeah. Come on here. We got to stop limiting ourselves. God can do anything. But he won't fail. Amen. Get excited about that, y'all. He won't fail. We're going to fail. We don't fail. We're going to fail again. But God, he don't ever fail. Thank you, Jesus. And that gets me excited because I know, I'll talk about me, because I know <laughs> that it's nothing but the goodness of the Lord, his grace and his mercy and his unmerited favor that have brought me this far. That's it. It ain't nothing else. Hallelujah. Nothing else. Thank you, Jesus. All right. So let's go back to this word, whatever. All right. Whatever. Whatever. We're going we to whatever we ask for in prayer. Now listen, sometimes you can get a doctor's report. Uh huh. Uh -huh. We got doctor's reports, y'all. I need a doctor's report because I just gotta get myself together. <laughs> Jesus. All right. So the doctor says, "Well, Miss Montgomery, Montgomery, we got the test results back, and this is something that's terminal and it's incurable." Well. When I begin to do my whatever in prayer, I'm going to remind the doctor that my daddy said, I am healed. I am delivered, right? I am curable. Hallelujah. Because whatever I ask in prayer, and I believe that thing, I'm going to receive that thing in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. See, we got to start speaking to these things, you know? The enemy will have us so jacked up. I mean, jacked up because of what we cannot see. Because we don't necessarily always see the victory at that moment, right? And so the enemy will use that to get you distracted, to get you to push back a little bit, to get you delayed. But see, that's when you got to activate your Jesus power. And you got to say, I'm more than a conqueror, yeah. right? By his blood, I can do all things. Yeah. Hallelujah, right? We got to start speaking those things into the atmosphere. We are no longer defeated. I'm no longer bound. No, yeah. because Jesus saved me. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. He saved me. A wretch like ooh, a wretch like me. I was a mess. My, 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 my. Still a mess sometimes. We're going to pray. But I was a mess, and God allowed his son to die for me. Look, I'm going to give all I got to the Lord. Tired, feet hurting, back hurting, I'm sleeping. God going to get it anyhow. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 See, what happens is, because we ain't seeing that thing turn around. You know, you know. Tell us, preacher. We, we, we ain't feeling it in our spirits. You know, we ain't feeling the spirits high right now. We start to doubt. Mm -hmm. Then we start to fear. Uh -huh. Then we start to worry. Uh -huh. Then we start to question. Uh -huh. And then we go on and sit down. 
I'm going to just wait for the Lord to give me that sign. And I'm going to wait for him to tell me what to do. But my God said, you got to put some work in this thing. Listen, you got to work your faith. And that means you can't be still. The enemy wants you to be still so you don't do what God has called you to do. Come on here. Listen. That's why when you over here teed and tired and you good, the devil like, ah, oh, she good. I ain't got to worry about her right now. But when you start doing for the Lord, listen, he come like the back. Oh, she wants to do it? Oh, the back. Oh, she want to say, I love you, Lord? Oh, the back. Oh, that's when he's coming, y'all. That's when he's coming. Listen, but y'all get excited when you get the phone call. But that means you're doing something right. <laughs> you want to share it? When you cry, when the enemy cries, check yourself. You better check yourself. When the enemy ain't coming for you, check yourself. Listen. <laughs> Listen. So we got to understand, right? The power that we have. You know you got power. I told you that before. Stop playing. So we got power. We got power to speak to the mountain to be moved, right? Right? Yes. Right? Yes. Okay. We got power to speak to that thorn and right guess what? Uh-huh. For that to be removed. We got power. You know you got power, right? We got power to say, I'm healed in Jesus' name. We got power to say, I'm delivered in Jesus' name. We got power to say, I'm no longer bound in Jesus' name. We got the power, y'all. Thank you, Jesus, for the power. Hallelujah. Are you excited about power today? So, this power, you know, requires some work. So we got to work. Get it? (laughs) But see, sometimes what happens is we allow the walk of what we're currently on work our faith. We don't get it there. Like, we can't dwell on what we're currently going through to justify the goodness of the Lord. Right? We're going through something. It's going to happen, period. Get used to accepting. You know what I'm saying? It's going to happen. But we got to be able to work that thing. That means I'm going to walk through it. Why? Because God said I could. I'm not going to be still in that mess. No. I'm going to walk through it. I'm going to work my faith, right? Listen. What does it say? What does 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 7 say? Right now, tell me. No, okay. It's, it says we should walk by faith and not by sight, right? Well, do we do that? Do we do? Do we do it? Right. So listen. We have to be able to come to God boldly. We are bold in the world. I mean, come on. I mean, I speak for me. I'm bold in the world. Come on. Right? But I have to come boldly to God and be confident in that whatever I'm asking him in prayer is going to come to pass. So, 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 so what are you submitting to God on today? What, what are you, what's your whatever? To God today, right? Is it maybe you want to start a new business? Is it you want to write a book? Uh-oh. Is it you want to buy a new home? Is it you want to create a podcast? Is it you want to be a better servant? <laughs> that should be first on the list. Lord, help me to be a better servant when you can. I'm going to come later. <laughs> Amen. Because when you align yourself with being the servant that God has called you to be, everything else will come on. When you pay your tithes consistently, listen, I pay my tithes because look, Pastor Taylor, Thursday morning, 6 a.m., she get my tithes. I don't play. I'm not playing games with God. God's been too good to me. He's been too good to Andrew my name Montgomery. I am not playing games. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That's how you not get gangster 
Devil, I play games. You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying, Devil? I play games. Keep talking. I'm going to throw it on the whole time. Listen. You better yeah, say something here. Yeah. Right. <laughs> so what are you asking God for? Now don't allow it to be what you you can't see. You know, because then we get stuck. I know. Don't allow it to be what you can see. Because when we see these some messed up stuff sometimes. But you allow it to be what you cannot see. Right? And you then thank God for it. In the midst, right? You ain't gotta wait till you don't arrive. You praise him in the midst while you get in there. Amen. You know what I'm saying? Okay. Amen. All right. So I'm going to praise him in the midst until I get there. Yes, because I know how good God is. Yes. I know what he done brought me from. Yeah. I know what he done done for me. Yes. So, when we walk by faith, we should be talking a little different, y'all. You know, because sometimes us Christians, we just be speaking what we feeling at the moment. And that ain't of God. <laughs> but when we realize we about to work some faith, then our words make our change. Right? So when those situations arise, we're not going to speak to what we may be feeling defeated, disappointed, let down. We're not, we not, no, 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 no. We're not going to do that. What are we going to do? We're going to start speaking 1 John 4 and 4. Greater is he that is within me. He that is within the world, right? We're going to start speaking in Philippians 4, 13. I can do what? All things through Christ who strengthens me. We're going to start speaking Psalms 30, verse 5. Weeping may endure for a night, but what? Joy comes in the morning. Hallelujah. So we have to use the word as our weapon. And then we use our faith walk to get through the battle. Oh, yes. that was good. Yes. Write that down. Yes. Use the word. Use the word as your weapon. Write it down, and then your faith walk gets you through the battle. Jesus, I'm gonna put that on a hashtag. Yes. That's right. In Jesus' name, Hallelujah. So just like the father who had a demon possessed son, he worked his faith, and what happened? His son was delivered from the spirit. Right. That came from Matthew chapter 17. Read that later. Just like the woman with the issue of blood. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. She worked her faith and what happened? She was healed. That came from Mark 5. Five. Read that later. Just like David facing Goliath. <laughs> he worked his faith and what happened? He slayed the giant, didn't he? First Samuel chapter 17. Read that later. So what are you working your faith for? Is it to see that wayward child come back home? Is it, to, is it to be released from your negative past? Is it to be delivered from addiction? Is it to be lifted out of depression? Is it to be able to love and forgive others? Only God knows your true desire and what you want to walk in faith for him to do, right? And this is the best part. It doesn't take a football field size amount of faith right now. All right. What what does it take? At least what does it take? A mustard seed size. Listen, that's not a lot. <laughs> so we can do this, right? Yeah. We can do this starting with the mustard seed size faith. Yeah. And that comes from Matthew chapter 17, verse 20. But do you believe? Mm -hmm. Well, I do believe. I believe that God is ready to do a new thing in each and every one of us. Yes. But do you? I believe that God wants to pour out his unmerited favor in your lives. Yes. But do you? I also believe that God wants to free us from whatever is holding us back from completely surrendering our will and way to him. But do you? Do you believe? Are there any believers in the house today? Any believers in the house? No, 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 no. Don't just say you believe because you're in the house. And we're in these four walls here. But are you a believer outside the door? Mm. Are you a believer when all hell is breaking loose? My mind. Are you a 
believer when they scare the lies in your name, my mind. That's right. Are you a believer when they're disrespecting and mistreating you? Yeah. Are you a believer when the bills is due and the money looking for you? Uh -huh. Are you a believer? Jesus. And listen, all that happens outside these doors. So let me ask this again. Are there any believers in the house? Amen. So now that we know we got some believers in the house, it's time to start working what? Our faith. And as we know, faith requires work or action, right? James 2.26 For as the body without the spirit is dead, so faith without works is dead also. Yes. So are you ready to work your faith with me, y'all? This is going to require some action, though. But you ready? We ready. We ready. We ready. So if you're here today and you're saying, God, I trust you. I trust you, God, and I'm ready to work my faith in all areas of my life. I need you to come to the front. So if you require some action, y'all. Only if you're ready to work your faith. That's it. All right. Amen. Amen. So we got some ready warriors right here. Amen. Amen. It's time for war. Spiritual war. That's right. We got to be. So, what we have here is the beginning of our faith walk. We have our mustard seed cells right here. This is our mustard seed side of faith right here. So we're going to take this on today. And what we're going to do is take this as a reminder of where our faith walk begins. It begins right here. Right? So we're all going to take one for today. I know you wanted to stand, so I just gave you one. <laughs> we connected like that. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Amen. There we go. So we're going to take this, and we're going to put this where you're going to see it. Somewhere in the house. Don't put it in the closet. Put it somewhere you're going to see it every day. Every day. Right? And take this as your reminder that you have some growing to do. You have some growing to do on your faith. And as you do that, what's going to happen? That means you got to get into the Word. Amen. That means you got to get into the Word. Amen. That means you got to get into the Word. Amen, somebody. Amen. Well, okay, then you got to get into the Word. Amen. Right? Amen. That means you got to get a prayer life. Amen. That means you got to get a prayer life. Amen. All right, okay. Amen. That means you got to turn away from some things. Amen. That means you got to turn away from some things. Amen. All right. Amen. And what will happen is, as you continue to do these things, this mustard seed right here is going to grow. Yes. Right? It's going to grow. It's going to bust out this thing here. Right? That's the goal. Let it bust out. <laughs> but you take that with you. And remember, Minister Andresa said, we're going to start with this mustard seed. We're going to get in the word. We're going to get in the word. We're going to have a prayer life. We're going to have a prayer life. Yes. yes. We're going to remove ourselves from some things, people, places, and things. Yes. We're going to remove ourselves from people, places, and things. Yes. Not right now. Because we want to see the growth. Because right. we're about to work our faith in Jesus' name. <laughs> All right, y'all? Sit down, y'all. Amen, amen. And as you sit down, remember Mark 11, 24. Therefore, I tell you, whatever you ask, in prayer. Yes. Believe that you have received yes. and it will be yours. Amen. Now go forth. Be great and work your faith. I love you guys.
God taking you to a whole nother level. My God. And you know, it, it's funny, the message she gave on working your faith, and that's exactly what happens when we work our faith. God will give us the confidence and the spiritual boldness. Not arrogance, there's a difference. Not conceitedness, there's a difference. But he will give you the confidence you need to go higher and do the things in him. I seen her do some things today I ain't never seen her do before. But that allows me to know she's working her faith. Amen? So not only is she did she give us the word, but God dealt with her on the word first, so she yeah. had to actually start working her faith. Got some results. Say, okay, Jesus, I, I know what you're saying to me now. I can give it. I can give it out. You see how that thing works? Yeah. God, so he he mm -mm good, y'all. <laughs> like that kid was so mm -mm good. He just so good. What a word! I needed that word on today. I tell you, I, 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 she she truly is one I can depend on. Um, and I appreciate that. A lot of times you can't. You know, sometimes uh, pastors have a hard time depending on somebody, especially when it comes to being in the pulpit area. So I truly appreciate, you know, but I didn't know if I was going to make it today. My knee is swollen three times the, the, the size of the other one. I need uh, replacements on both of them, but the, the right one is really bad. And just in so much pain, it was such an uncomfortable ride home because my sister moved here. So, you know, the car was crammed and we were jam-packed. And I just knew, you know, Mr. Andre said, you're going to preach on Sunday. I said, I think I am because I know the Lord had given me a series. And then the more I thought about it, I said, God, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna be able to do it. I'm in too much pain. I got too much. I'm too tired. You know, I don't want to be in, and I don't like to be in the pulpit lagging and you know dragging and all this stuff. So I said, you know, I she said, well, I'm gonna prepare a word just in case. You know, and I just truly appreciate the fact that you know she's she's there. She's she's got my back. She's there. So we truly thank God. We thank God. Give her another hand clap of praise. Hand clap of praise for that word that we prepared. What a, what a wonderful, wonderful word. I pray that as many of you who are watching online will receive that message in the spirit that it was given because God truly is no respect to persons. He's not just doing it for those of us in this house, but for anybody who is willing to receive that word, God will do it for you too. So we just thank God for that word that's going forth. We're going to um, go ahead and close out our service. I'm going to ask Minister Andre. <laughs> Minister Andres, my sister should sitting there, sitting there, shaking her head, no, like don't call me. Right. Um, but truly, you know, as I said, as, as and as Minister Andres has just preached, you know, you take that little jar and you see that mustard sized seed, and as you begin to grow closer to God, and as you spend more time in His presence, you will get that confidence you need, and you'll watch that seed grow and grow and grow. And so you won't be sitting there shaking your head, no, when the preacher needs to call on somebody to pray or to, you know, read a scripture or to sing a song. You know, there's there's some things that. You truly understand as you grow closer to God that you couldn't understand when you were further away. Um, it is just, you know, the old folks say you understand it better by and by. And it, I, I think that's like the perfect example. There's some things that I know now that I didn't know when I first started out. So, you know, as you go on and as you grow in God, you learn more and more and more. And you understand things better and better and better. So we just truly thank God. We're going to ask Minister Andres, excuse me, Minister Andres to close out as far as announcements. Uh, I, yeah, she's gonna, she has a couple. Uh, yeah, so I'll just let her tell them all because she knows them all. Uh, so, yes, as far as announcements go, we know that April 24th, 4 o'clock, we are to be here in the place upstairs, right? Yeah. Yes. Because that's Pastor's installation service. Oh, you must be here what I said. <laughs> I said that's our Pastor's hey! installation service. April 24th, 4 o'clock. Thank you very Hallelujah. Much. Mm -hmm. So we are to be in full force here supporting our shepherd. All right. Right? Yeah. All right. We'll talk later what I want y'all to do because I'm going to tell you what's good. And then. <laughs> That's all right. That's all right. I'm the little boss and I'm going to tell you what's good. No, it's good. I love you. <laughs> Pray for me, y'all. But you know what? We're having a good time in the Lord. Right. I had enough of crying and. Crowding and stuff, I want to laugh and smile. Yeah. Jesus' name. Shoot. Um, what else? Also, um, August 16th, the Montgomery's are like are inviting the church to our home. Oh. No, I am in April. I'm giving five myself. It's the A's. Yeah. April. 16th and 7th. From 2 to 4. No, 2 to 6. We want to invite the church to come to our home. Um, we're praying the weather will be nice. We'll be outside. 
but if not, we'll be inside. But we just want to fellowship, come together as a church family, get to know each other, have fun, because you know I'm crazy. And then we can finalize what we're doing for Pastor with her not being here. <laughs> oh, now you got to be here. Yes. That's okay, you can come. <laughs> I won't miss out. We'll send you in the house. Yeah. <laughs> So that's August 16th at our house. Uh, if you need the address, just let me know. Need a ride, we'll figure it out. Um, two to six. And then I think that's it. Yeah, I'm still figuring out the women's meeting and stuff right now because I wanted to do the seminar, the luncheon seminar. But I've just been traveling a lot. I'm sorry, my new marriage has just got me all over the place. I'm trying to get my life together. Um, so I'm gonna get, we're gonna get it together, ladies. I promise. Yeah, we're slowing down. I promise. <laughs> right, honey? <laughs> He's like, right. So we'll, we'll get that going, I promise you. And um, I would actually like to have it in person, the women's meetings. I just feel like I want to be close with y'all. Okay. Yeah. Um, I believe that's it. I know Sister Jamie wanted to share something, and then we'll go ahead and close out, okay? It's funny because I was going through things in my mind before she started preaching, and I need to start paying my tithes because you know I'm new to the church and everything. Um, and I'm sitting in my brain because I've been going through a lot of different things. You know, I'm Jason Owens, but uh, financially, I, I mean, I'm okay financially, but because of things that I'm going through right now, I don't have much in the bank, and I have $149 in the bank right now. And God said. So your tithes because it's gonna come back. That's right. Come on. That's my God. right. My God. So I gave my hundred and ten dollars. Right. But I know. Right. I know God's gonna supply. Yep. More than enough. Yes. Yes. More than I ever gave. Yes. Yes. So I just felt I felt in my spirit that I needed to share that with you guys. Because she spoke about faith, and I was like, whoa, what the heck? <laughs> I was like, I, I, I just did that, but I fought, I fought with myself. But I said, I know what he could do. I know what he could do, and I know that he's going to take care of me, and he's going to put me where I need to be in the physical and in financial. Yes, that's right. So... <laughs> Even when the spirit has you share something, your body is just like, all right, I need to sit down. I love it. <laughs> Amen. 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 And that had to be shared for a reminder for somebody else. It doesn't mean that it was someone in here, but it could be someone on Facebook. They had to be reminded. Amen. Right? God is, He does things smooth. Yes. Smooth joke. I tell you, I love them. Amen. All right, let us rise. Yes. Yes, yes, yes. We just thank you all for coming out and spending some time with us today. More importantly, spending time with the Lord. That's all that really matters anyway, right? So Heavenly Father, we come on today to say thank you, God. We just thank you for meeting us here on today. And we thank you for just having your way. We thank you for speaking to our hearts and our minds on today to allow us to see things a little more clearly to be willing to do a little more work on today, Lord God. And as we go forth, let us go forth working our faith, knowing that you are the author and the finisher of all things. And as we leave this place, but not your presence, Father God, please just be with us. Continue to give us travel and mercy, continuing to guide and order our steps as we continue to give you all glory, all honor, and all praise. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. 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 Amen.